Today we have a few updates on the Mika Miller case that we have been covering from South Carolina. Last time I left you guys off, Mika's body had been located and we were basically trying to figure out was she led to the park by somebody? Was she by herself? I don't have a lot of information about the Susie lady involved in this story. We may talk about her again in another video. I just would like to see what more information is released as well as there being a timeline released related to Mika Miller's death. There was also a 911 call release of Mika calling herself because of copyright. I'm not going to put it in this video, but I'm sure you can find it easily online. Hi, my name is Shane. If you're new here, welcome. If you're returning, thanks so much for coming back. Again, today we're going to be talking about the wild case of Mika Miller. New information keeps coming out about the case and I just want to keep covering it because it just seems really suspicious. If you enjoyed today's video, please don't forget to leave a like and also if you don't want to miss any new videos hit that subscribe button so this timeline was the last thing that I personally heard of information released about the case they did list it with the timestamps as well so we're just gonna go through it and kind of see where our opinions are at at the end of the video I do want to put a disclaimer that all of this video is my own opinion I'm simply taking what it was made public online talking about it with you guys and just speculating simply because I have an interest in true crime that's what we're talking about today. I am not a criminal professional. I am simply a true crime junkie. So with that being said, now let's get into the story. So after the last video, my opinion was falling under the premise that JP Miller had something to do with Mika's schmooicide. Now I, I kind of still believe that if he wasn't the one to pull the trigger, possibly through the stalking, the harassment, and feeling overwhelmed Mika may have felt like she had no choice. I was kind of sideswept when this timeline came out because I was trying to think of theories of like him driving her to the park but when this timeline came out it kind of seemed like maybe she did actually pull the trigger herself. But again, there is still one thing questionable. I'm about to put a new cream bronzer on, by the way. We're going to try the NYX Butter Melt Bronzer in the shade Butter Off. On April 27th at 10.13 a.m. <gasps> oh my god. Okay, I was not paying attention. Look at what just happened when I was using a brush. Half of my product. Oh my gosh. Oh boy. I'm glad I'm putting foundation over this. 10.13 a.m. on April 27th. April 27th at 10.13 a.m., Miller is seen on her ring camera leaving her residence on Margarita Drive in Myrtle Beach. So allegedly, I think this was a Saturday and she was supposed to arrive at work and didn't. And that's when suspicions first arose that something was wrong and she was missing. It could have been really unlike her to at least not call in if she wasn't planning on showing up. At 11 a.m., Miller is seen on her ring camera arriving at her residence. So she leaves quarter after 10 and arrives at 11. So it's just about 45 minutes that she's gone. Now this timeline doesn't say what it is that she first did in that 45 minutes because then 38 minutes later at 11.38 a.m. her camera sees her leaving her residence again. So she leaves her residence about 40 minutes later and then it looks like at 12.12 12, she's caught on camera again. But then this time she's seen at a pawn shop. And what I'm just noticing now about this timeline, okay so it says she arrives at the pawn shop at 12.12 12 p.m. so right in the afternoon. At 12.13 13, Miller is caught again on the surveillance camera at the cash register purchasing a weapon. I have two questions and it doesn't even involve the question at the end. Just with that, it took her one minute from arriving to the pawn shop to her being seen then purchasing a weapon from 12.12 till 12.13. That's one minute, meaning she went straight for the counter. Even if you were there purchasing a weapon though, wouldn't you need to at least browse if you didn't know already know what you were looking for. Also, how did the guy check her out so quickly? Like did she, are you, can you put stuff on hold? Like she just got there, showed her ID and was able to. My second question, she was uh, in mental institutions. Don't you have to pass a background check to get a weapon? 
So I feel like some, uh, maybe she was dishonest. I don't know. But it says twelve thirteen Miller buying scene buying a weapon, and that right there raised those two questions that I think need to be answered. The next piece of the timeline also raises some questions because it says that. 12.34. So paying attention closely to the timeline, it only allegedly took her one minute to arrive at the store and to purchase this weapon in question. But then at 12.34, she's seen leaving Dick's pawn shop after purchasing weapons and ammunition. So she then, what, for 20 minutes, walked around the pawn shop browsing? Again, this is all my opinion. I'm just speculating. I'm just... But, okay, in my head, I'm trying to put myself in her shoes for a minute. If I wanted to commit that kind of act upon myself, right? And I drove myself to a store, and I drove myself to, like, what was even the purpose of the first errand then, if I already kind of knew, like, why would you leave and then come back? What did you get? What did she get, or what did she do when she first left the house? I guess that's another question. I'm on... Oh, my head, my head is spinning from this case. Again, everybody is different, but I'm just asking a question. If I went to a pawn shop with, obviously, based, based off of her timeline, with exactly what I know I want to get uh, to unalive myself, I would think that, again, I would think that after purchasing my weapon, I would just kind of want to want to get out of the store walking around for 20 minutes it just seems a little weird like are you just getting a gander at things that you're like oh like on your way out it seems a little odd i just feel like maybe it was stalling a little bit or like it just doesn't seem like somebody who was on their way to commit that act right and they're in their getting ready to purchase that weapon i would have an opinion that once you have that weapon in your hands like you'd get this massive adrenaline rush like I don't feel like I'd be able to stay calm cool and collected uh, especially in a public space I would feel like everyone around me would know uh, maybe that's just paranoia but seriously though I don't think I'd find myself uh, wanting to browse a shop right before I was on my way to commit something it makes more sense if she was just on her way to work and had was a little bit early and stopped and you know had a few minutes to kill and browse and then left um but I, I, again i'm not sure i'm not sure again with this timeline it's all screwy according to the timeline after browsing for 20 minutes uh she was she got in her black honda accord according to the timeline after she Browsed the pawn shop for about 20 minutes. She hopped back in her black Honda Accord. Ooh. At 106, a traffic camera caught her black Accord traveling down the highway. 20 minutes later, the same black Honda is seen pulling up to 41 Grocery and Grill. And this is at 127, so again, 20 minutes after the traffic cam first picked her up on the highway. So she left the pawn shop at 1234 and arrived at this grocery store and grill at 127. So she traveled an hour, right? Left at, left at the pawn shop at 12.34, still seen driving at 1.06. She could have possibly pulled over somewhere that doesn't have surveillance. That's always possible, but she's at least has traveled an hour uh, to get to this grocery and grill. Another thing that kind of strikes me as odd, again, trying to put myself in, the sh in her shoes, if again my mindset was to be on my way to unalive myself, unless I'm doing like a last meal for myself kind of thing. Mm, but Mika is seen leaving the store after buying a drink and gas. I guess that's not that odd. She had had a long drive, clearly at least an hour, so the gas makes sense. Today I'm gonna try these half lashes too, by the way. So our timeline has left off with her leaving the grocery and grill at 1.35. A 911 call was made from a 843 area code number. Mika Miller asked if her phone could be located and then threatened schmooicide. Mika ended up hanging up the phone on the dispatcher before they could get any more information. They tried to call her back multiple times, but they could not get in touch with Mika. She was just not answering her phone. They did make the 911 call that Mika made 
to the dispatchers available on the site. I'll list it in the description if you want to check it out yourself. Just to summarize her phone call, she basically just wanted to let the dispatcher know that she was in distress and having thoughts of committing, uh, unaliving herself. So basically wanted her family to know where to find her body. But just based off of what she said in that phone call, it kind of raised a red flag to me. So at 303, Robinson County deputies were dispatched to the Lumber River State Park. This is where she was found for a well-being check. At 305, contact was made with the State Park Superintendent. 331, 11 minutes later, deputies arrive at the State Park and begin the search. The Rangers also jump into the search at this point. Two minutes later, at 333, a drone was launched. At 342, a telecommunicator contacted Verizon to request an updated location ping, so they're pinging her phone at this point. They're trying to track her last whereabouts. At 350, detective with the Air 3... More detectives, more detectives arrived at the park. While detecting an aerial search, detectives were approached by a person who said he found a bag while fishing with my, Mika's IT inside. Detectives took possession of the bag. The Robinson County Sheriff Office findings said this person's this person heard crying and then a pew pew shot. He went further into the slough or the slow where he found the bag about two feet from the water's edge. At 423, an individual contacted Robinson County 911 and said he located a body in the water. He had been fishing on his kayak when the body was found. So an hour and a half later, her body was found. Investigators located a Sig Sauer, a pew pew case in the passenger seat of the vehicle, and a box of ammunition ammunition in the center console of the vehicle. Investigators who found a receipt for the pew pew from a pawn shop and a receipt from the convenience store in the vehicle. Both receipts were dated for the same day of Miller's death, which we just went through the timeline for. The serial number on the weapon found in the water at the crime scene matched the pew pew box that was found in Miller's, Miller's Honda Accord. At 7-Eleven they found the pew pew in the water and that's it. They have information about where John Paul is at the time. Uh, 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 I, again, I don't, I'm still left with a thousand questions even after this third video. I don't know. It, it, the timeline seems to add up. Here's the question though that I wanted to sort of save at the end. If she had, if she made that phone call to tell the dispatcher, hey, I'm in distress, but this is where I am, this is where you're gonna find me, I want my family to be able to find my body, which, I mean, I guess maybe so that they get closure, but also, that's not even my question. My question is, if you wanted your body found, why would you go in the water to do so? Because you would think, I mean, a lot of this, <laughs> you're not really thinking very logically about, but even in distress, maybe, you would think that you would want to find some place that you know someone's gonna stumble upon that you wouldn't have to search for you would think that if you commit such an act in the water your body has the chance of i don't i don't i think bodies will sink after a while but i think you also run the risk of it just floating away i almost want to look up like an aerial view of this state park to see what kind of what like it's a still water is it literally a lake? Like there is no like dams or no float? Like, I don't know. It seems like a really odd place even if she did go through this and step by step everything we read was was her uh, last steps on this earth. Why in the water? Seems a little odd. Anyway, let me know what you guys think down below and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye!